inviting me to this wonderful conference. I have to admit that I've been waiting for such a conference for a long time. And I will try to uh, look at our topics from the European perspective. I've been residing in Canada for the past 27 years, so um, by nature, I am inclined to look at the multicultural problems and also because my interests were circling around the uh, unity of Europe and those big pictures from, uh, from a longer global perspective. And I encourage everybody in this conference to try to extrapolate all this uh, very useful information that we acquire from different uh, European countries to try to think in uh, in global terms, looking at Europe from a perspective uh, of growing and changing global uh, political situation. The main uh, concern of mine is the truth. Taking from the theory of systems, if we would like to be successful in building strong Europe in front of the challenges that emerge extremely quickly in the recent uh, couple of years, and especially history is really speeding up uh, in the past couple of months, we would like to have a functioning system. None functions well when there is no truth in a political public discourse. So uh, one big um, picture that I would like to start with is to point to the fact that our uh, communist experience in the socialistic uh, Central and Eastern Europe uh, is very much uh, in the same line, believe or not, uh, with the situation that is created by, by political correctness. I enjoyed enormously Carlos' presentation because he drew our attention to this particular problem. Uh, political correctness is nothing else than communism in a cultural terms. It's uh, practically hijacking words to change the discourse and turn words into their opposite meaning. So please try to uh, try to. Uh, look at our joint European experience from the perspective of this heritage that is still permitting all our social relationships in Europe. And the, the topic of my, my presentation uh, was unruly rules of law. That's an example of the fact that the words are changing their meaning universally, and we have to be very careful to decipher the real meaning behind the words that are used in the uh, public discourse throughout the whole Europe. It is hard to believe that it's been just a year since law and justice has shocked the leftist elites, both in Poland and worldwide, winning parliamentary majority after capturing earlier in 2015 the presidency, despite hostile and manipulative major media coverage in Poland, very well described by, uh, by the previous speaker. Uh, we have to also um, understand how important is this misleading pulse that we are experiencing in any case where conservative movement is achieving some successes. So uh, our change in Poland, in my opinion, and probably many of us will agree, heralded even greater shocks of the same sort later on. What I mean is, first of all, Brexit, a shocking event that was so unexpected by the whole elite in Europe, and then quite recent Donald Trump's rise to power. It was along the same lines, again, we experienced the shocking uh, uh, reaction to this event. And uh, if you would like to read the titles of media throughout the world, 
and especially uh, the European-centered media, you would uh, notice that there is no um, natural acceptance of the democratic uh, solution that was chosen by the American people, but it's swinging our attention, for example, to the American uh, form of code that emerges almost immediately after the, the uh, poll victory, and then to the fact that there is opposition to the critics uh, of Donald Trump, who is, of course, uh, a person completely new to the politics, but uh, if you learn, as I did, that the, it is estimated that the media coverage before this election was like 50-something to two uh, in favor of uh, Mrs. Clinton. So that was a shocking revelation to so many people. Uh, in my opinion, it's very likely that the same growing wave of popular sentiment will push back soon the lefties in a repeated presidential election in Austria, planned for December, presidential legislative elections in France and Netherlands in spring, and Germany and Czech Republic in fall, to be followed by Slovenia in winter. So we have a very interesting time in terms of politics in Europe. Uh, we need to bring back, as soon as possible, the truth and rationality to our European discourse and politics in accordance with our founders of the EU, all of them Catholics. Uh, Robert Schumann, soon to become a Catholic saint, I think. Konrad Adenauer, a devoted Catholic as well. And Jean Monnet, a less devoted but still Catholic and religious man. Why is it so important? I already mentioned, if we want Europe as a whole and every nation within the Europe succeed in this challenging world, um, especially with the rise of China, powerful country, we know very little about and we expect good and we expect unknown, uh, the first thing to do is to build our strength in terms of economy, in terms of social relationship, and if we want to do that, we cannot use false information. We have to base it on truth, diagnosis, and true relationships. Um, let me illustrate this by using the example of the so-called rules of law framework of the European uh, Commission. I've been speaking about it time and again, all the time, and still I hear in all media the same uh, rhetoric, the same kind of political correctness, describing to people a completely false information. Unlike the previous eight-year coalition government, dominated by the liberal civic platform, PO, uh, described very well by uh, by the speakers before, the new conservative Polish majority government clearly has stronger democratic mandate as well as commitment to democracy and law and justice. Already peace has an impressive record of fighting the government corruption, while the corruption records of PO authorities, including the PO injustice system, as I would call it, universally criticized and mistrusted by Poles, probably would have shocked the European public opinion if only its media had ever reported any disturbing facts and EU, Council of Europe or other competent European institutions ever initiated an appropriate reaction as they should have. Uh, however, there was an EU interest in criticizing the shortcomings of the PO government while the European Commission assumed extremely quick adverse position towards the government of peace since day one, using exactly the rules of law framework, among others. So let us decipher the real meaning of the words. The fact is that there is no EU procedure under the so-called rules of law framework, as initiated against Poland by the European Commission on January 13, 2016. 
The rules of law framework cannot bind either Poland or any other EU member state or any other legal entity, except perhaps the Commission itself. The Commission attempted to introduce unilaterally, without necessary treaty authority, some new procedures based on fat accompli, certainly not law. The procedure, so-called, has emerged quite recently in a document based apparently on an internal resolution of the Commission called the Rule of Law Framework, being in fact a completely unruly act, a baseless regulation directed outwardly, not internally. According to the Commission itself, and now I am citing, the new framework does not constitute or claim new competences for the Commission, but makes transparent how the Commission exercises its role under the treaty. This is the end of the citation. In fact, uh, the truth is that it constitutes and claims new competences for the Commission and certainly does not comply with its role under the treaties. What is precisely the Commission role under the treaties in this field? It is under the hard regulations stemming from the Article 7 of the Treaty on the European Union. And now I'm citing again. The European Council, acting by unanimity on a proposed by one third of the member states or by the Commission, and after obtaining the consent of the European Parliament, may determine the existence of a serious and persistent breach by a member state of the values referred to it in Article 2 after inviting the member state in question to submit its observation. This is the end of the citation. So, under Article 7 of the EU, I am not concentrating, uh, concentrating on the soft regulations, we say about opinions, etc. I'm concentrating on the hard regulation, which can lead to deprivation of the rights to vote in certain, certain European institutions. So under Article 7 of the EU, the treaty, it is the European Council and not the Commission who has the power to determine the status of the rule of law and other values in a member state. Not Commission, but the other institution in the European Union. The Commission merely has the right uh, the same right as, uh, as member states to make a proposal to the European Council as do any one-third of the member states and certainly no investigative, administrative, judicial or decision-making rule directed to the third institution. The rule of law framework has been adopted in a non-transparent, I was searching for information and have not found any, Substandard way, example, there is no citation on the specific legal authority for the resolution, no data on votes or dissents, not even on whether there was any voting in fact, not to mention any expert opinions considered or rejected when adopting this resolution. Therefore, the Commission proceeds here not only without any legal basis, um, but also in a non-transparent, hasty and substandard way. The question is why? And now, to finish, I will concentrate a couple of uh, suggestions for this fantastic initiative of uh, Mrs. Eva Stankiewicz and the whole Solidarni 2010. I propose to build our agenda, and initially consider a couple of points. First of all, perhaps to create the European jargon decipher, I, I called it like that, to make sense of the politically correct language which aims at uh, misleading and misinformation very, very often. Uh, second, to develop a network of contacts with like-minded organizations who value truth above everything else, and individuals as well, 
in all European countries and to provide volunteers with downloadable, useful instruments to organize themselves and their work for our cause. Third, to create a professional think tank and lobbying most urgently in the EU institutions for the purpose of promoting our causes. I credit this idea to Mr. Waldemar Biniecki. And four, to compile list of our candidates, and that's most practical point, in each EU member state and work out a plan to support them in the European parliamentary elections in 2019 and win this institution for our cause, gradually and persistently. We have just barely enough time to prepare for those elections, so we have to organize ourselves. And I ask everybody for that. Europe is precious for us. Europe was imagined after the Second World War by the, those Catholic thinkers who thought, first of all, never ever the same war again. But I consider this political correctness a form of war, a war on truth, and I would even say that in those turbulent times when everything globally is changing, the truth cannot be a victim if we don't want to be victims. Thank you very much.